Are there coffee lovers amongst you? If there are, then you would be familiar with the urine that you produce after drinking many cups of coffee. You will find that the urine is not only high in volume, but very light in color, indicating that the urine is dilute. However, if you go out for an exercise, you will notice that the urine volume decreases and this time the color appears much darker, indicating that the urine is now concentrated. The difference in the volume of the urine as well as the concentration of the urine is actually related to a process known as osmoregulation. So welcome to BioWorld where we will explore osmoregulation. Osmoregulation is a branch of homeostasis. In osmoregulation, we try to maintain a constant osmotic pressure in our blood by controlling either water concentrations or salt concentrations. In today's video, I will be discussing the role of the hormone ADH in controlling the water concentration in our blood. To explain the process, we shall break it down to stimulus, receptor, control center, effector, and response. Let's start with stimulus. The stimulus that causes change in our blood osmotic pressure can be due to exercise or due to us standing under the hot sun. In either case, what happens is we will start to sweat a lot. This will lead to dehydration. Water in our blood will begin to diffuse out to the cells to compensate for the water that is lost by sweat. So now what happens is there is insufficient water in the blood. The blood becomes concentrated. So this means the blood osmolarity increases. The increase in the blood osmotic pressure will be detected by the receptor located in the brain. The brain is also the site for the control center. However, the receptor and the control center are in two different locations. The receptor is the hypothalamus. Inside the hypothalamus, there is an osmoreceptor that can detect change in blood osmotic pressure. Now, when the osmoreceptor detects an increase in the blood osmotic pressure, the osmoreceptor will stimulate the posterior pituitary gland. The posterior pituitary gland then will secrete more ADH, that is antidiuretic hormone. Next, we see the function of this hormone at the effector site. ADH will be transported by blood from the posterior pituitary gland to the kidney. The effector is inside the kidney in the form of the nephron. ADH will specifically bind to the cells located at the distal convoluted tubules and the collecting duct. To describe what happens next, I shall use this cream rectangle to represent the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct, while the red rectangle will represent the peritubular capillaries. Do keep in mind that the blood that is traveling in the peritubular capillaries have high osmolarity due to dehydration. Whereas, the distal convoluted tubules and the collecting ducts will have water since they are producing urine. Now, the ADH will bind to the cells of the distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct, making the tubule and collecting duct more permeable to water. So what happens next is the water that was originally supposed to form urine will now diffuse out of the tubule and duct 
into the peritubular capillaries. So now, more water is being reabsorbed into the peritubular capillaries. When the water mixes with the blood, the osmolarity of the blood decreases and returns to normal. The response that we can see from this osmoregulation process is that since the tubules now have less water, the urine formed will have a lower volume and appear darker in color because it is concentrated. Let us now discuss what happens when we drink a lot of water. All that excess water will dilute our blood. So the blood osmolarity now will decrease. This decrease will be detected by the osmoreceptors in the hypothalamus. The osmoreceptor then will inhibit the posterior pituitary gland. So the posterior pituitary gland will synthesize less ADH. When there is less ADH, at the distal convoluted tubule and collecting ducts, the permeability of the tubule and the duct will decrease. So, the water that is in the urine will not be reabsorbed into the peritubular capillaries. Meanwhile, the excess water in the peritubular capillaries will be transported into the tubules for excretion to occur. So in this way, the blood will increase its osmolarity to return to normal. Meanwhile, all this excess water in the tubules will be excreted as large volume of urine. And because the volume is excess, it will be dilute. We now know why we produce a high volume of dilute urine when we drink excess water. But how do we then explain the high volume of dilute urine when drinking coffee? The effect of coffee on our urinary system is the same as the effect of alcohol. Both of these drinks are diuretics. By the word diuretic, we mean that these drinks inhibit the effect of ADH. So, the presence of caffeine in coffee and the chemicals in alcohol decrease the permeability of the distal convoluted tubules and the collecting ducts to water. So, the water that is forming urine stays in the collecting duct and becomes excreted as the high volume dilute urine. So the next time you are drinking coffee, do a little revision on osmoregulation. In my next video, I will discuss osmoregulation involving the reabsorption of salts. Until then, bye-bye.